So energy is a very important concept and there's many different forms and manifestations of energy. There's two forms that are very important with regard to this video. There's energy that can perform work, which is energy that can actually be harvested, harvested or harnessed. So imagine all the different forms of energy that you are acquainted with. Mechanical energy, solar energy, chemical energy, such as ATP in the cell. Well, all those different forms of energy can be harnessed. So energy that can be harnessed, we will define that as work. Now we're going to contrast that with energy that is dissipated or energy that cannot be really utilized and that just goes, it just goes into the atmosphere or the universe. We'll call that heat. So heat usually has the one letter abbreviation, lowercase q, w, which is sort of what I'd like to refer to as useful energy, has the abbreviation as w. The units of energy are joules, which are capital A. So that's the SI base unit for energy. And we usually see it in chemical reactions in joules per mole or kilojoules per mole. Now take a look at this hypothetical reaction that I drew here. We have reactants A plus B going to products C and D, and they're housed inside this beaker. So here we have the beaker highlighted in green. Now I can call the reactants and products A, B, and C and D, I can call that the system. So the system really interacts and is in communication with the surroundings. Now what are the surroundings? The surroundings can be this beaker, the surroundings can be this room, the surroundings can be campus, the surroundings can be the state, the surroundings can be the country, and you can take it all the way to the point where the surroundings can be the entire universe. So when we talk about exchanging between systems and surroundings, there's a give or take. The system can do work on the surroundings, the surroundings can do work on the system. In the same regard, the system can give off heat to the surroundings. In that case, if the system gives off heat to the surroundings, we know this as the beaker turning sort of warm or hot. And eventually, the beaker will give off its heat to the room, which in turn will give it to the universe. We keep on going on and going on. Now, also vice versa, the surroundings can give energy to the system. In that case, the beaker will turn cold. And where does the surroundings get the energy from? The heat energy, it gets it from the universe. The surroundings can do work on the system as well. So the important part of this short lecture is signs, positive or negative. So if we have a situation where the system does work on the surroundings, I'll draw a arrow here for the system doing work on the surroundings, the system will have a sign of negative, whatever that may be negative in joules, and the surroundings will have an equal value but opposite in sign. Remember, the law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can take on various forms, but it cannot be created nor destroyed. So the main point here is that work done by the system on the surroundings gives an, a work function for the system. Here it is just the reactants and products negative and the work function, the surroundings will be an equal value, but opposite in sign positive. So work done by the surroundings, on, by the system, excuse me, on the surroundings will be negative value for the system, a positive value for the surroundings. We can flip the script, so to speak, and say, what happens if the surrounding does work on the system? If the surrounding does work on the system, work done by the surroundings, on the system, that's highlighted in blue, will have the opposite sign. So work done by the surroundings, in this case, onto the system. Here, the universe, the surroundings, something is sort of pushing this reaction forward. Um, it's doing work on the system to make the reaction forward. Um, so that means the surroundings are negative, the system is positive. So that is looking at the exchange of work between system and surroundings. What about the exchange of heat between the system and surroundings? So let's say the system releases heat to the surroundings. The system releases heat to the surroundings. We know this, as I said before, by the beaker turning hot. So we're going to call that an exothermic reaction, exo meaning outside. Heat is a product in this form. 
heat is given off by the reaction. So actually heat is a product. Heat energy, which is the form of energy that cannot be utilized or harnessed. It just sort of gets dissipated. Now in that situation, the system will have a negative sign for an exothermic reaction. Okay, system giving off heat. The surroundings will have a positive sign, equal value, but positive in uh, signage. Now let's do the opposite here. Now let's say the surroundings give off heat to the system. Okay, so the surroundings give heat to the system. We know this again by the beaker turning warm, excuse me, by the beaker turning cold. So if the beaker turns cold, then really the system, this reaction is taking in some heat energy from the outside. We can call it the surroundings. We can call it the universe. Anyways, if a system in the reaction requires heat, heat is a reactant in this form, and we're going to call that an endothermic reaction. Endothermic meanings inside, inside. So the system is taking in energy, heat energy from the inside. So what's the sign for that situation? For an endothermic reaction, the energy for that system is positive. So we have a positive value. And for an endothermic reaction, the surroundings will be the same value but opposite and sign negative. So as a quick review here, work done by the system on the surroundings is negative for the system, positive for the surroundings. Work done by the surroundings on the system is negative for the surroundings and positive for the system. When we're talking about the exchange of heat, a system that releases heat to the surroundings is called an exothermic reaction. The system will have a negative value for the energy, Q, heat energy. The surroundings will have a positive value for the heat energy. And finally, if heat is taken in, or the system takes in heat from the surroundings to the system, heat is absorbed from the surroundings to the system, we call that an endothermic reaction. In this particular case, the surroundings will have a negative sign for the heat value. The system will have a positive sign for the heat value. Equal values, but opposite in sign. In an endothermic reaction, heat is required, so it's a reactant. In an exothermic reaction, since heat is liberated, heat becomes the product.